the, the galaxy of intellectuals, invited guests, esteemed dignitaries, and all the distinguished participants. It is indeed a tremendous pleasure and privilege to be present over here and welcome you all for the International Conference on Commerce, Management, and Social Science Research. This conference is organized by Management Institute, the Warsaw University of Life Science Poland, Institute for Service Management, Germany, College of Social Science and Humanities, Bulehora University, Ethiopia, and Research Cultural Society. Can we go to the next slide, sir? I, Ms. Jaya Chetwani, would like to welcome you all about the organization and organizing institu institutions. Management Institute, the Warsaw University of Life Science, Poland, Institute for Service Management, Germany, College of Social Sciences and Humanities, Bulehura University, Ethiopia, and Research Cultural Society. The objective of the international conference our main objective is to observe the current scenario towards the advancement of common citizens' life by improving the theory and practice of various disciplines of business management and economy. The aim of the conference is to provide an interaction stage for researchers, practitioners from academia and industries to deal with state-of-art advancement in their respective fields. About the Institute, Management Institute, Warsaw University of Life Science was established in 2019. The Institute, in its assumptions, conducts research as well as distinguished knowledge in the field of management science and quality, and in particular, knowledge management, digital management, or social corporate responsibility, that is CSR. The Institute attach great importance to cooperation with domestic and in particular foreign universities and other research entities. The Institute take care of the high level of knowledge, skills and competencies of its staff. About the university, the Warsaw University of Life Sciences is the oldest agriculture university in Poland and the fourth of this type in Europe. Its origin dates back to 1816 and are related to the establishment of the Agronomic Institute in Marmont. The advocates of its foundation were Stanislaw Stasi and Stanislaw Potry, and its first director was Jesse Benjamin Flat, one of the best experts in the economic relations in the Kingdom of Poland. Research Cultural Society is a government-registered scientific research organization. Society is working for research community at national and international level to impart quality and non-profitable services. Society has successfully organized 100 plus conferences, seminars, synopsis, and other educational programs at national and international level in association with different educational institutions. Educational institutions, colleges, universities are welcome for Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, free to sign without any charge for academic exchange, knowledge sharing, and collaboration to organize events with us. We are promoting and sponsoring educational events as well as publishing research work in collaboration. We also invite sponsorship from the industries, corporates, institutions, and government bodies for our educational programs. About Bulhore University, Ethiopia, Bulhore University, BHU, established to play its part in the national efforts of bringing quality and excellence in teaching, learning, 
research, community, services, administrative functions, good governance, connecting the development of cultural and natural resources with technology and its application. The university has laid down structure for relevance and quality of education, research community services, and good governance. BHU offers a total of 201 programs, of which 100 are undergraduate programs, 82 postgraduate program, second degree ME, and 19 third degree PhD. College of Social Sciences and Humanities. College of Social Sciences and Humanities is one amongst the eight colleges having five departments. Currently, the college offers 16 Bachelor of Arts, BA, and 17 Masters of Arts, MA, and two PhD programs in a regular summer and weekend. The college has more than 131 on duty and 44 study leave instructors in different fields of study. Department of Sociology and Social Work. At bachelor's level, 34 students graduated in June 2021 and 100 students are doing their studies in second, third and final year of study. Very recently, the department has launched Master of Arts in Social Work, MASW program to meet the ground needs of West Guji, Bula Hora Town, Borino, Yabilo and Molaya Voria and State Guji, Adolola and Negila towns. Currently, 24 students enrolled and completed their first year of studies. About College of Business and Economics, the College of Business and Economics, CBE, is to produce well-trained manpower in the area of business and economics that could contribute towards the development of the country. Along with the production of professionals, the college shoulders public responsibility to back up the development efforts of the nation through provision of quality education, societal problems, solving research activities, community-based service, and many more. At present, CBE has enrolled 3,000 undergraduate students in 11 programs, and more than 500 students in seven master programs, and more than 35 students in four PhD programs are enrolled in its regular evening and distance education program of accounting and finance management, economics, logistics, and supply chain management, along with marketing management. So it's a great privilege to have amongst us the eminent speakers for today. Uh, please pardon me if I'm not able to pronounce your names correctly. I hope you understand. We are Grateful to have your presence, Dr. Anna Jaswick, Dr. Raina Lampu, Professor Josu Takala, and Dr. Chirag M. Patel. It's a great honor to have all of you with us for this international conference. Thank you for gracing the occasion. About our first speaker, Dr. Anna is an assistant professor in Institute of Management, Warsaw University of Life Science. She is a member of Polish Scientific Society of Marketing, head of postgraduate public procurement studies, theme editor in the International Journal, Annals of Marketing Management and Economics. She is researcher in international and national projects and author of several dozen scientific publications, organizer of international conferences, and reviewer of scientific papers in international journals. Her research areas include consumer behavior, enterprises, innovative marketing strategies, and sports marketing. As part of the teaching and research internship, she was a lecturer and researcher in University of Azores, Universidad da Murci, Mughlai City, Koncham University, Alain Aladdin Kubit University, National University of Life and Environmental Science of Ukraine, Solveig University of Agriculture, Russian State Agrian University, Moscow Timurins Agriculture Academy, St. Petersburg State Agrian University. Ma'am, it's a pleasure having you with us. Can you please take over from here? Uh, good morning or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 
I'm very glad to welcome you. And I would like to uh, thank to the organizer for such a privilege to be a keynote speaker today. Uh, as it was mentioned, I represent the Warsaw University of Life Sciences. Uh, this is the biggest agricultural university in uh, Poland. And I'm honored to share the scientific insights that may contribute to the development of international cooperation between our universities in this discipline of business and management. And I will, now I will try to share my uh, screen. Um, just a moment. And please confirm that my, uh, my screen is shared. Can you see my screen now? Yes, Anna, it's visible. Yes, okay, so I'll make the present presentation more, just a moment. Mm, okay, is, is it visible okay? Is Everything is visible? Yes, ma'am, it is. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. And my presentation aims to bring closer the issue of customer engagement in consumer value co-creation in the sports market. This is one of my research interests, marketing in the sports market. So therefore, first, I will present a very, very brief review of the literature on consumer value creation. Then I will present the objectives of the study, the adopted methodology, results of research and conclusions. Um, according to the Kotler and Doyle, value is as an economic category, is an object of exchange, reflects the benefits uh, sought by consumers and it is offered by a company to its customers. Other researchers believe that consumer value cannot be created by a company by itself, but appears thanks to the engagement of consumers, often networks of relationships among themselves. And this claim was a basis for a theory of service dominant logistic. And this um, theory promotes co-creation rather than creation of consumer value. So from this point of view, consumer value uh, as an economic category originates from numerous interactions between company and the customers that are engaged in this process. Uh, whereas the market becomes an area for gaining experience, for sensations and co-creation. So it must be added that the opportunities and the range of cooperation of market entities aimed sorry, for creating value vary. Vary depending on the sector, depending on the type of offer products and depending on the market where the companies operate. And in the present times, which are believed to be times of economy of experience, it is the sphere of emotions which offer the biggest chance for building relationships uh, between companies and uh, customers. So it means that experience sold by consumers may be one of the most important elements in the co-created relationship between a company and a customer. So marketing communication based on consumer feelings and emotions is more effective than communication founded on rational and logistic arguments. And one of the major qualities of sports events market is the unpredictability of the sports people's endeavor. Any entertainment event or 
a strictly sporting event is unique. So that, why? Due to its intangible nature. So the consumption of sporting events is public by nature. If we join a sport uh, uh, events, big sport events, they are usually public. We pay for them and we want to achieve the satisfaction. And this fact of ex is of extreme significance in the context of creating consumer value. Without the participation of the audience, without its reaction, and without involvement in the creation of the event, it would be not possible to achieve such a high level of immersion and the state of flow, which is reached by both spectators, spectators and the competitors. And the question uh, addressed by me and Professor Zygmunt Waśkowski from Poznan University of Economics that researched this issue with me. And the objective of our deliber deliberation is how does the creation, sorry, the co-creation of consumer value viewed as a process take place on the sports event market. And based on the literature study, we put forward our own conceptual model, which is a synthesis of established already facts, aiming at the answering to the question posed here on the slide. So with a view of verifying the created model, we used a case study as a method of indicating, indicating sorry, the correlation described in this model. And there are, there are two main areas of uh, consumer enga engagement in the co-creation value. One of them is their involvement in the communication process. So regarding the sports markets, on this market by engaging uh, cons uh, consumer customers in this, in this process with the sporting event organizer or um, communicating with each other, consumers have a real impact on shaping the uh, image of the event and also shaping their expectations. And in this way, they help the organizer uh, prepare an event which will meet the expectation they expressed. So the other area of consumer involvement is also the participation, their participation in the process of creating a product. And sporting events have uh, their value in the eyes of consumers only when the stands are full of the engaged spectators, for example, during a football game or a mass uh, running event. And according to the Verdhoff, a consumer may experience emotions not only during the purchase, and not only during the consumption of the product, the event, but also in the pre-purchase and in the post-consumption phase. And um, the co-creation of consumer value on the sports market is a process which takes time and involves both organizer of sporting events and their participants. So we propose a conceptual model describing the four phase process of the co-creation of consumer value on the sports market uh, in the segment of sporting events. So due to the fact that sporting events are organized um, 
uh, are organized on a cyclical, let's say, basis, this process of co-creation of consumer value can be described by means of a loop uh, of four repeated phases. In each of them, the degree of the organizers and the degree of participants' involvement is different, may vary, depending on the possibilities and depending on the needs of organizer and of participants. So in the first phase, the organizers, is organizer vies for participants. That's why the level of involvement is very, very high. And the attendance at the sporting event depends on the effectiveness of activities in this phase. So the uh, interested and pot potential participants of the event may join the process of creation the future event. They respond to the messages and invitations sent to them through both uh, dialogue with the organizer and communicating with each other. And in the second phase of the value creation, uh, during the event, both sides are strongly involved. The engagement of the organizers is, is here related to the ongoing service to the customer and providing service at the highest possible level. So whereas participants uh, are in the state of immersion, experience a specific, let's say, let's call it flow, which during the huge events, as I mentioned, for example, match, uh, uh, football match events or running uh, events, tens of thousands of participants resembles the behavior of let so-called bees in a hive. And the last post-consumption phase is characterized by still high, but decreasing engagement of the participants who still relieve, relieve their experience. And as a case study, we used PKO, Białystok Half Marathon, that is the, an international event with a few thousand runners from a dozen or so countries starting uh, every year. And the case study presented here covers six, six, seven, sorry, a, a PKO half marathon uh, organized on in uh, 2019. And the data used in the case, in this case study analysis had been obtained from three sources. The first one, it was a personal interview with the director of the event and uh, the analysis of content of the event website, it was the second one, um, as well as interviews with uh, a dozen or so participants of this uh, event as a third source. And the organizer, uh, I must add that the organizer was aware of significant role of the runners for building a brand of the event. Therefore, all the activities were focused on the co-creation of the consumer value. And with reference to the model proposed by uh, me and my colleague, uh, the organizer initiated and used the runner's involvement in the three phases, pre-purchase phase, consumption phase, and post-consumption with a view to co-create the uh, value of the product with uh, consumers, with, let's say, runners and the spectators of the event. And during all phases, uh, the organizer used both traditional and uh, digital methods of uh, communicating uh, with the ra uh, runners, ICT techniques, were used to contribute the value of the marathon, half marathon, sorry, and they 
allowed the runners to participate in the decision-making process regarding selected uh, elements of the sporting event. So social media and uh, virtual networks made the exchange of information and uh, um, the communication two-way, synchronous and based on a network of connections between the organizer uh, and other uh, between the part, uh, uh, particular organizers of the foundation and between the organizer and the runners and also runners among themselves and initiating the organization of the event uh, the organizer made use of marketing of experience in this phase the activities of organizer were very intense and they were focused primarily on the promotion of the run. And gradually, the suspense was built around the biggest running event in southeast of Poland. And the activities can be divided into two categories. First one, information about the event. And the second one, encouragement of the participants' involvement. And in both cases, the organizer actively use digital um, technologies and here you i would like to say to so, show sorry some examples of information activities um, the photos and the films thanks to them the runners from outside the region uh, were aware that they would be given a significant uh, added value of the event, positive and unforgettable aesthetical and culinary even experience and also joyful atmosphere. And the information about the uh, awards for her marathon, information about the charity character of the race were also credible recommendation for runners to participate in this uh, event. And another group of um, activities were related to the engagement of the runners. And it was partly initiated by the organizer and partly resulting from the initiative of the participants. And a few months uh, before the event, the runners involvement can be defined as reactive. For example, they were uh, activated in response to incentives uh, provided by the organizer and the closer the date of the event of the run, the more willingly the participant uh, got engaged by themselves. So they make contacts not only with the organizer but also with uh, each other. And um, a running event is a product, a product which offers the uh, consumers not only the run, but also a number of different accompanying initiatives. So for the full understanding of this issue, the consumption phase should be delivered, uh, should be, sorry, should be um, divided, let's say, uh, into three sub-phases. First one, these are the activities that take place um, uh, at, the, um, at the place of the event, but before the run. The second one is the main run, and the third is all the activities taking place after the run. And um, here I would like to show some sample of activities building emotional uh, value, spiritual relation with the uh, organizer. Uh, on the basis of the experience from previous six editions, the event organizer was aware that the key to success of the run, of the whole event, are the, let's say, stimuli for emotions, stimuli for uh, sensations experienced by the participants through the run. And 
multidimensional actions uh, were undertaken so that the runners could feel that this was their day and feel satisfaction in three main phases of the run. At the start, uh, of course, they were supposed to feel excitement and the adrenaline. During the run, uh, in spite of the physical fatigue, uh, they were supposed to feel joy and at the finish, euphoria, elation, endorphins, and satisfaction. And as it was mentioned earlier, the atmosphere of a sports event is to a large degree created by participants. So their activity, their interactions, sharing emotions, um, spending time together in Bialystok city where the uh, event took place, lasted till late uh, night hours. Each participant of the event was genuinely engaged in the creation of this memorable experience. And that is the key element of the value of the sports product. For many runners, the emotional value of the event was enchased by the presence of their families and the presence of, uh, of their friends. And according to the organizer, the post-consumption phase lasts for about three weeks. During this time, it is noticeable that the event participants are more intensively engaged than the organizer, especially for a few days after the event. Um, they still think about this event, about this, this run. So their character of this interaction is also somehow different. In this phase, uh, interactions among the participants are prevailing. Aware of the fact that the interactions among runners after the run affect the perception of the whole event in the future, the organizer also, of course, reminded uh, in touch with the participants, primarily on the digital channels like social media, mainly Facebook, uh, Instagram, and also, of course, on the official uh, website of the run. And an interesting solution was, for example, inviting to the event some famous sport bloggers who described the uh, event in their blogs. Their um, articles obtained over a dozen thousand hits. And the, uh, uh, the activity of the runners took the form of numerous posts on, on the social media with options, of opinions, sorry, uh, with uh, comments, uh, assessments of the event, photos, discussions, uh, mm, and a widespread exchange of, of information. So for obvious reason, this activity lost its intensity after about seven to 10 days. And the next decrease uh, in the interest of the participants could be noticed after about uh, three weeks. Although um, the organizer regularly monitors the media and he told in the interview that between the sixth edition in the 2018 and the seventh edition in the 2019, there were about a million posts which included the phrase of the half marathon in Bialystok. And the last phase, it is tranquility phase, and this, in this phase, the participants' involvement was clearly falling. The organizers' activities were less visible for the runners, only slightly influenced the value created for, uh, for uh, consumers, and the organizers provided a summary of the event, among others, informing about the results of the charity action. Uh, for these reasons, the level of the runner's emotion related to the event declined because they engaged in the next running initiatives. And the organizer announced some actions, like, for example, debut for work medals, for, for medal the runners who took part in the five kilometer side run uh, accompanying the half marathon. Uh, they could take part um, um, 
in the comp competition, um, they if they wanted to be trained by the professional trainers, they could take part in the competition after um, they were offered a free of charge start training, led by uh, professional coaches and the organizer uh, um, placed the coverage of the beginners preparation in the social media. And the beginners themselves uh, were very active in the social media and described their activities there, which of course resulted in their friends' interest increasing, let's say, interest in the next edition of the Bialystok Half Marathon. As a conclusion, I would like to say that uh, the value for the customer on the sports market is created as a result of involvement in the creation process of both the organizer and the viewers or participants, recipients of the event. As shown on the basis of the literature review and the case study analysis, the process of co-creation customer value lasts much longer, uh, much longer than the time of product consumption, because it be begins long before the sporting event and may last after it. And in free uh, uh, of uh, uh, three out of four um, phases, the creation illustrated by us in this model presented here today, it is expedient to engage uh, customers in the process of co-creation value. And the carried out case study confirmed, confirmed uh, let's say, the validity of the proposed conceptual model. In addition, it allows to um, discover new facts. For example, that not only the strength of the um, parties involved in different uh, individual stages, but also the type uh, of involvement is different in the pre-purchase and the post-consumer stages. So this fact uh, poses further research questions and setting out further directions of research on the sports markets. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask them, them um, um, directly or to write them. Uh, I will try to answer to them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matas, your valuable insights and spreading more light on experience and element of value for customer on sports event management and discussing sample activities, building emotional and spiritual relations with us. We appreciate your inputs, ma'am. Next, we have with us presentation. The fragrance of flowers spread only in the spreads in all directions. We are also honored to have with us Miss Rania Lampu. Compensation was okay. I need to introduce ma'am to all of you. Ma'am is a global uh, educator, a STEM instructor, and an ICT teacher trainer in Greece. Currently, she's a STEM instructor at the Greek Astronomy and Space Company. Annex of Salmias, and she's also working at the Greek Ministry for Education. At the Directorate of Educational Technology and Innovation, where she writes.
Education Conference. And I want to thank the Research Culture Society and especially Sir Patel for his kind uh, invitation. And today I will present uh, entrepreneurial and innovation ecosystems for sustainable development goals. So we give uh, uh, an interview of recent developments in entrepreneurship, as well as best practices and measures taken to support entrepreneurship at national, regional, and international levels, including in response to challenges posed by the COVID pandemic. And I will also explore the role of inclusive, green, digital, and circular entrepreneurship in the post-COVID context with regard, of course, to the implementation of 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. So, uh, can I share my presentation now? Can we enable my screening? Can you see now my presentation? Yes. yes. Okay. So it takes a village to raise a child and it takes an ecosystem to scale innovation. The innovation ecosystem is defined as the network of institutions in the public and private sectors whose activities and interactions initiate, import, modify, and diffuse new technologies. Nurturing and scaling innovation requires the support, of course, of the robust innovation ecosystem. The influence of national uh, education system, industrial relations, technical and scientific institutions, government policies, cultural traditions, private sector institutions, and many other institutions fundamental to harness youth led innovation. And as uh, uh, the global economy is going through a turbulent and formative period, the role of entrepreneurship in inclusive and sustainable development as enshrined in the 2030 agenda of the United Nations has become even stronger. So in each resolution of entrepreneurship for a sustainable development, the general assembly uh, of United Nations recognized the important contribution entrepreneurship makes to sustainable development by creating a jobs, driving economic growth and innovation, improving social conditions, and uh, addressing social and environmental challenges in the context of the agenda. So the need of a comprehensive and holistic approach to entrepreneurship that includes long-term and cross-cultural sectoral uh, policies and strategies are necessary. And this resolution remains highly, of course, relevant in guiding policy response and recovery measures to address the impact of uh, uh, the COVID pandemic of the development of entrepreneurship. So the world of uh, challenges can also represent uh, business opportunities for social innovation. Entrepreneurship can be uh, an important driver, enabler, and empowering tool for sustainable development, especially social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurs aim to explore market opportunities to create uh, new innovative sustainable solutions for economic, social, environmental challenges. And therefore, uh, they are seen as problem solvers in areas covered by uh, the 17 sustainable development goals. So, micro, small, and medium sized enterprise uh, constitute the backbone of the global economy, accounting for uh, over two thirds of employment globally and uh, 80 to 90% of employment in low income countries. And uh, owing to extreme losses that uh, are affecting every nation and every sector of industry, there are many people without jobs that uh, who are looking and will continue to look for entrepreneurship opportunities. And at the same time, the motivations of entrepreneurs and enterprises uh, can be uh, leveraged to tackle uh, the, uh, the world's problem, such as poverty problems, while helping to implement system development goals, especially in underperforming sectors and in uh, social recovery. So the role of entrepreneurship uh, is uh, in social and economic development has become more critical uh, than ever and will be among the priority policy measures of member states during the COVID, uh, post-COVID recovery and beyond. Entrepreneurship has globally remained one of uh, a great form of employment and the livelihood since 2015. The share of entrepreneurs grew in 36, for instance, of uh, 72 surveyed countries, according to studies. However, the COVID pandemic uh, has slowed down uh, entry and entrepreneurship with business applications down by 40% in some countries. And uh, a summary of this survey demonstrates that more than half of uh, micro, small, and medium sized enterprises have suffered from severe revenue losses, and one third fear that they will be out of business within one month. 
So the advancing of uh, the COVID pandemic has caused a steep global economic uh, pullback without modern parallel. And according to the National Labor Organization, um, between uh, 5 million and 25 million jobs will be lost and there will be a drop in labor uh, income. Over uh, 7 million people are expected to fall back into extreme poverty. So how can we foster innovation in entrepreneurship in the post-COVID era? First of all, uh, while uh, progress has been made in recent years towards uh, promoting entrepreneurship policies and strengthening the competitiveness of uh, uh, enterprises, the COVID pandemic has not only caused a significant adverse impact on this process, but also exposed and different pre-crisis fragilities in this ecosystem. And uh, however, um, I believe that pandemic also provides an unprecedented opportunity to emerge with a better and more efficient set of policies and measures to promote entrepreneurship with a view to building uh, an environment that could lead to a resilient, green and inclusive uh, system that encompasses vulnerable groups. When uh, the pandemic was declared, governments first responded with short-term policies, including tax reliefs, uh, extensions of uh, loan guarantees, direct grants and uh, subsidized uh, to meet uh, to other prices. And for a long-term uh, strategy, governments are also increasingly implementing structural policies to support these uh, um, enterprises in adopting uh, digital technologies and expanding their uh, market reach. So coherent uh, and holistic policy measures and initiatives to support social entrepreneurship and sustain uh, this, including in post-COVID pandemic uh, scenarios, in alignment with the cross-cutting nature of entrepreneurship, span several interrelated areas, including regulatory reforms, improved access to finance and markets, facilitated technology change innovation, enhanced development of human capital, increased awareness of entrepreneurial opportunities and creation of support network. What about gender gap? Gender gap have remained wide in the majority of countries with the rate of entering on into entrepreneurship for women be being equal to that of men in only six out of 62 surveyed countries. Uh, so this crisis has had a particular negative impact on women and young entrepreneurs, given their uh, overrepresentation in sectors, particularly affected by lockdowns and other systemic issues, including informality and the lack of access to finance, technology, markets, networks, and social protection. And uh, there are also overlapping forms of discrimination uh, based on categories such as gender and race that are often missing from uh, government responses. So in response to these challenges, the uh, United Nations also has launched a project which is called the Global Initiative Towards Post-COVID Resurgence of uh, this, uh, a medium and small um, medium sector to uh, assist governments, entrepreneurship institutions working to support entrepreneurship. And in this framework, a series of online tools have been developed to promote entrepreneurship and uh, facilitate uh, their um, function. So um, this is the first one, uh, formulating national entrepreneurship strategies. In the past years, the uh, United Nations has continued to support member states' efforts uh, and their efforts to design, formulate, and implement national entrepreneurship strategies based on the entrepreneurship policy framework. And since 2018, uh, many member states have adopted comprehensive entrepreneurship policies following an uh, integrated approach building on linguages uh, between regulations, education, technology, innovation, finance, and market access. So ahead of the COVID pandemic, this, those policy measures laid the uh, groundwork in harnessing entrepreneurship potential. For instance, then uh, we can mention um, in Ecuador, uh, the National Entrepreneurship Innovation Law has uh, been approved to enable uh, the entrepreneurship ecosystem for innovation. And Malaysia has also launched uh, the National Entrepreneurship Policy 2030 to develop an inclusive and competitive entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, for the enterprise sector that is outward uh, oriented and invest in entrepreneurs from vulnerable uh, backgrounds. Ghana has introduced also uh, this entrepreneurship uh, program to provide integrated national support for startups and small businesses based on uh, um, incubation acceleration programs. 
uh, very, very important education. And the entrepreneurial skills, both uh, soft and hard skills, are store, strong predictors of entry into entrepreneurship, irrespective of the level of education, especially in developing countries. Effective entrepreneurship education policies and programs are needed in formal and informal education to help prospective entrepreneurs to accumulate skills and competencies throughout life. And this is particularly critical during the fourth industrial revolution, in which innovative entrepreneurs play a key role in creating and using frontier technologies for sustainable development. And since 2018, the member states have continued to embed entrepreneurship in their education systems, particularly at the secondary level, and develop uh, a curricula training teachers with novel pedagogies. For instance, in uh, Egypt and uh, Madagascar, um, uh, there they have uh, introduced the entrepreneurship curricula and technical education at the secondary level. So training uh, in entrepreneurship skills has increasingly targeted people from vulnerable also backgrounds, including women, young people, migrants and refugees. Another important issue, especially during this uh, COVID uh, lockdown, uh, is uh, technology exchange and innovation. The COVID crisis has highlighted the importance of accelerating the adoption of digital technologies uh, by entrepreneurs and the prices not only to strengthen their resilience, but also to find solutions to stop the outbreak. Innovative entrepreneurship, uh, however, remained remarkably low in uh, the pre-COVID period, with less than 5% of entrepreneurs having introduced new products or services, and even fewer having used the latest technologies or procedures in their new businesses in 2019. Uh, so, uh, Member states have introduced innovative policies to provide support. Um, we can mention, uh, or for instance, China or uh, Malaysia that have invested in the digitalization of small and medium sized enterprises. And also, we can uh, also mention in response to COVID pandemic hackathons. Hackathons have been organized in Finland, Latvia, and Poland to innovate novel solutions. Improving access to finance. Access to finance remains one of the top constraints for especially women and young people. The severe uh, consequences of the COVID pandemic uh, um, uh, have prompted the member states to quickly provide financial support through credit guarantee schemes, grants, uh, uh, debt moratoriums, bridge loans, and direct uh, subsidies, among others. And alternative financing schemes and digital finance solutions are also introduced to keep the prices afloat. Improving access to markets. Why? Because the majority of entrepreneurs, unfortunately, do not uh, participate in the international trade and they have difficulty reaching national markets. Over 60% of early stage entrepreneurs across the majority of developing countries target customers in local markets. So inequalities around, particularly by firm size developing countries, um, uh, if they are, uh, it's much more uh, serious the problem. So with, uh, uh, with the COVID pandemic, because the prices are increasingly moving the content online to e-platforms in search of new sales channels and uh, also uh, increase in this way their uh, business and their performance. Awareness raising and networking programs that, start, that target startups are increasingly setting up online platforms that raise awareness foster networking among peers and improve access to relevant and up-to-date information for entrepreneurs. For instance, we can mention in India, the Startup India program that has connected over 75,000 startups, 500 mentors and accelerators, etc. And it's interesting to mention also the Global Entrepreneurship Week. It's a global campaign to raise awareness and promote entrepreneurship initiatives, which was celebrated in 170 countries in 2019 and was, uh, uh, was led by United Nations. Promoting inclusive entrepreneurship, uh, I because, as I mentioned before, vulnerable groups have been hit, uh, hit, uh, hit, uh, the hit, uh, hit hard by the COVID pandemic. Over one and a half billion workers in the informal economy have been severely affected by lockdowns. Uh, youth employment rates have soared. Migrant refugee workers are also particularly hit by the uh, pandemic. So we need a social entrepreneurship that plays an important role in promoting inclusive growth and um, sustainable development. Um, and the work of social innovators, which includes providing education technologies, e-health services for the most vulnerable developing community tracing initiatives has even, even been more critical now. 
And finally, promoting green entrepreneurship uh, initiatives are also in place to uh, incentivize uh, um, entrepreneurship towards innovative, uh, green, resilient, circular, and inclusive solutions. Uh, for instance, uh, we can mention um, uh, in uh, Indonesia that it has announced that it will cut its marine plastic waste by 70% within five years and become plastic pollution free by 2040. Uh, and also Morocco that has implemented its youth employability strategy green aimed at teaching vulnerable uh, youth skills for the green economy, including in the areas of renewable energy, ecotourism and integrated water management. Um, so uh, if we can uh, uh, we can say uh, that uh, uh, very, very important is to enhance alignment of entrepreneurship policies with the post-COVID uh, priorities in the 2030 agenda, accelerate uh, regulatory reforms to support recovery, strengthen resilience and discrimination, promote environmental sustainability, promote and set for inclusive digitalization because digital technologies have changed the way in which the global economy operates and redefines access to markets. So a rapid COVID-driven digitalization uh, provides chances um, for uh, uh, other prices. Uh, foster financial inclusion with innovative and digital financing. Uh, expand sustainable market access at all levels. Invest in entrepreneurship education and skills monitor and assess the implementation of entrepreneurship policies and their impacts, strengthen coordination at all levels, uh, coordination among relevant all key stakeholders are necessary, governments, private sectors, etc. And uh, uh, promote green entrepreneurship. Now, it's interesting to see uh, how uh, the, uh, the, uh, the company's uh, corporate performance, the notion has changed. I mean that when you hear the word performance, usually you think about finance, you think about profit or loss. Uh, nowadays, we're talking about a new approach, about a comprehensive approach, including financial aspects and non-financial aspects, which are primarily concerned with elements of social responsibility. So uh, we're talking about uh, what we say, environmental social performance, certain activities that meet social environmental safety and reliability requirements. Um, why? Because companies' performance does not uh, simplistically refer to the higher accounting results or uh, uh, profits, etc., but it should cover all uh, aspects. Uh, so uh, today we're talking uh, uh, about this, about, about social performance, because to improve the performance, the entities are turning to certain activities that meet social uh, performance. And um, also, the long-term programs aim at improving the risk management and quality performance. Uh, so we're talking about also new uh, terms. Um, new terms also that uh, emerge from this de definition is corporate social responsibility. It's a concept whereby organizations serve the interest of society by taking responsibility for the impact of their activities on customers, employees, shareholders, communities, on the environment, all aspects. And social responsible companies take into account their impact on communities and the environment when they make decisions, when they balance stakeholder needs with their needs to make profits. Uh, another aspect very important is uh, that in order to report the no financial performance, companies present in their uh, reports the following types of uh, reports. We have a social balance sheet, environmental balance sheet, and non financial dimension by reporting to the bottom line table. Uh, why social balance? The best tool to give visibility to the questions and useful information and transparency is social balance. That use of a model for reporting of the quantity uh, quality of relationship between society reference groups uh, represented by the entire community seeks to establish a complete and transparent framework of the complex independence of economic interests and the socio-political factors and resulted from choices taken. And why this is important? Why uh, what are the objectives of the social? Uh, seat, well, seat, which is also called, it has many names, social uh, audit, social accounting, etc. Uh, what are the objectives? O of course, it enables the company to know its role in society. Uh, it's a tool for comparing the result with existing needs, providing information about the social objectives, provides information on the social objectives. Of course, it demonstrates that the company goal is not only to make profit, but also to provide added value to the community helps develop democracy and transparency in the company's activities, becomes important to um, in terms of effectiveness and legitimacy. 
And uh, let's not forget also that uh, there are social and cultural factors that influence entrepreneurship and cultural aspects are assumed to shape the environment in which business is conducted. Uh, and uh, as I said before, it's a triple uh, bottom line. Uh, it's uh, actually uh, a theory that underlies a balanced development of the economic entity uh, that have terms on environmental, why triple? Because we have environmental, social, and economic capital. So the major objective of economic uh, entity is not simply the profit. Increasingly, more companies began to approach for an, a sustainable development of their activities. So this is the uh, TBL, uh, triple bottom uh, line concept, introduced performance at three levels, environmental, economic, and social. Why? Because if companies ignore the social environmental aspects, these companies risk to lose in uh, uh, the national market share, to sustain the costs on greening of the activity areas and to allocate large sums for damage control to regain consumer confidence. So it's actually a, a philosophy that guides corporate performance. And uh, uh, also there is uh, uh, the concept of uh, sustainable consumption, very, very important, which was incepted in Oslo Symposium 1994. And this actually is the use of, uh, it has many, many uh, definitions, but here we can say it's the use of uh, goods and services that respond to basic needs and bring a better quality of life while minimizing the use of uh, natural resources, toxic materials, and emissions of waste and pollutants over life cycles as not jeopardize the needs of future generations. So sustainable consumption suggests for practicing, there's, there are two levels. The one is the macroeconomic level, which concerns the impact of companies on the environment, on the society in general. And there is the microeconomic, which concerns the individual, is how individuals um, behave. I mean, this, this suggests for practicing wise consumption habits in which individuals need to consider the post-consumption consequences for present as well as for the future. So it's a socially and environmentally concerned way of buying, of using and disposing goods and services. It advocates for, uh, for a wise and careful consumption pattern as well as efficient use of goods and services. It refers to the act of avoiding overindulging in purchase and careful use of goods and services that satisfy uh, the basic needs. Um, and uh, um, why uh, uh, is sustainable consumption is, is not in practice, uh, obviously, and as it is suggested by studies, uh, it is suggested that the government need to take some actions to include discussion of sustainable consumption in school, for instance, and colleges, textbooks, in order to make the new generations aware about the necessity of practicing such consumption behavior. And uh, also, um, uh, there's also suggested uh, that uh, maybe uh, some uh, people, uh, uh, some uh, uh, famous movie stars or singers can be used to create a long-term buzz in the national television channels to make people aware of this uh, issue. So um, before concluding here, you can see also the domestic ecosystem, how all key stakeholders are uh, necessary in order to form all this ecosystem. All these factors are interrelated between them. And by concluding, I would to say that uh, we need to harness, uh, in order to harness the potential of entrepreneurs uh, in recovery from the pandemic, entrepreneurship strategies must play special emphasis on structural policies to strengthen the resilience and the competitiveness. And such policies should, uh, policies should prioritize vulnerable groups, environmentally sustainable, sustainable models, including tailored support and skills development, digital financial literacy, digitalization, innovation, again, access to alternative markets and novel financial uh, schemes. Thank you very much sir, for your attention. And I have, of course, any questions. Thank you, Ms. Raina, for an enlightening presentation, fostering innovation, entrepreneurship in the post-COVID era. We appreciate your valuable insight and shedding light on sustainable consumption as well. Thank you, ma'am. Please accept the certificate of honor. Oh, thank you very much. So very much. And I'm very happy to collaborate with Research Culture Society.
Next, we are also honored to have amidst us the inspiring words of Mr. Josu Takala. Josu Takala has experience in industry from ABB 1979 to 1992 and academia. He graduated from Tampere University of Technology, MSc in 1980 and Dr. 1980, Dr. H.C. 2009 from Technical University of Kosia, Slovenia and University of Tunhusen on Finland 1988 and visiting adjunct professor in various universities in Finland and abroad. His field is decision making and operative sustainable competitive strategies. He has 650 scientific artist and special issues editorships invited speakers in chairman position in conference activities within university society relationships and programs and ownership in about 10 startups Hello, this is Josu Takala from Finland. I am going to speak for this conference about uh, decision modeling for technology and knowledge-intensive startups. Uh, startups are not only owned by me; uh, they are they are something else. Okay, my research group comes from Vasa. located here facing to sweden and this is uh, the university campus area yes seaside campus air first uh, if we look at uh, innovation score cards we could ask could we do something better if we for instance uh, look at the world's most innovative countries from year 2019 for instance finland is here so it would be quite much better and if we look at all europe this european innovation scorecard 2019 in there we are scoring better but the, our good brother sweden is even stronger and when we speak about businesses today they can be existing businesses or or new uh, startup businesses they are facing quite similar problems with sustainability so the strategy what they have doesn't sustain the same longer periods in some businesses the strategy has to be updated in the morning and in the afternoon you you need to have 
a new strategy. We know many, many reasons what uh, are causing this kind of fog. Uh, and our business is located here and we should see to future through this fog all the time. So we are interested about risk, what kind of risk, whatever it is related to technology or knowledge. What is it now? And what is the probability? Is it uh, bigger or smaller? Or what is it? Uh, what is the origin of this consequence? Uh, is it related to customers, economy, safety, or whatever? And uh, we are looking after investment, how this uh, risk is behaving. Is it smaller, uh, with smaller probability, and uh, where it comes from? And uh, we are looking the investments What we do, if this is the percentage, uh, how much we put money, and this is the uh, risk reduction. So, for instance, in this uh, uh, investment portfolio, we have five investments, and one question would be if, for instance, these three investments uh, would be better solution than just this one, this investment alone. Because uh, the risk reduction related to those is uh, less than 10 plus 10 and and less than 20, quite the same with the re risk reduction what this investment could cause. And the investment level with those ones is quite the same with this one. This is one example what kind of challenges we have. Technology and knowledge. In this study, what I'm speaking here, uh, knowledge is very much related to technology, how we can use new technology. And it's also coming from Greek language, where techne means know-how. And we are speaking mostly how the investments and the new businesses would be sustainable from strategy point of view. This is a making with technology and knowledge intensive businesses is challenging. One example of that kind of studies is um, related to Berryman Hagen study. And, uh, and it's uh, for new startups, innovations, and applicable for dynamic existing we have studied by sense and respond, uh, respond methodology, which is originally from military studies, where we try to make the businesses sustainable. Therefore, we have tried something else. It's related to our life cycle. And we can speak about three different types of technologies and knowledges, basic core and spearhead. Spearhead we need uh, typically when we are launching new businesses, because then we need to, uh, to give vision 
to our suppliers. Sand cone model is used here as well, and it's a methodology developed by Ferdos and de Meyer, where we put different performance dimensions. Like here, we put something what will remain the same longer periods on the bottom and next layers. Uh, shorter and shorter life cycles and the fine sand in the sand cone is here and the wind very easily takes that out. And our methodology is basing the, on the sand cone and performance levels. Uh, so that uh, all the time there is something in the sand cone inside that we can see and that is causing causing uh, collapsing this sand cone and we lose the height of this sand cone. And how we can use this? We, we can collect data from experts how much basic core and spearhead technology they need in different functions, different departments. So this risk can be related to basic core or spare head technologies like here. Uh, I have here two examples. Uh, one is related to what we actually did with students in also University of Life Cycles, uh, Life Cycle also University of Life Sciences, sorry, a couple of years ago, or escape room, where we can use different events like weddings, birthdays, other parties in a portable car. And the basic idea is that we have certain space like truck or any space where we want to make very uh, unique event. Core is uh, knowledge about marketing channel, how to market. And uh, this was the starting point. And then we planned something new to uh, develop this business idea by certain new features mentioned here to decrease the uncertainty so that the experts starting this business would be more agreeing about it. And that means uh, first round about 50% risk and uh, when we did this uh, for the future uh, another round so the risk level is uh, uh, more than 10 percent, absolute percent less. Case related to that before this business was started, basic was mobile phones, core, email, social media, and sparehead, something what we didn't know so well, like virtual reality. And the layers in the sand cone were information safety, including also security, and a reliability level of, of, of technology, and uh, uh, the software application level, and product price. What is causing the the biggest risk, the biggest uh, uh, uncertainty. We noticed that, I don't speak about that more, but uh, there are many benefits by using this kind of system. So you can manage all doors, update the keys very dynamically, you can uh, you can give permission to your boyfriend to come 
between seven to nine and uh, and not before seven and has to he has to come out before nine o'clock otherwise otherwise something bad will happen and if the key is lost it is easy to uh, reprogram Should be and could be achieved. Conclusion: We can evaluate technology and knowledge. What they, what kind of risk and opportunity they can, they can uh, create in startup businesses or in any investment in uh, business. What is dynamic in dynamic turbulence? And we have validated and even verified uh, this kind of uh, evaluation tools by experienced business people because they are saying that when you when you start something new, you, you need to take one third risk. So our our experience is that we can come to that kind of level. When we, when we plan in a good group new business well as this escape room. Escape. Thank you for your attention. It was indeed a delight to hear Mr. Joshu's insight for risk identification and analysis. Irrespective of being hospitalized, Sir has spared his valuable time for our conference. We appreciate his inspiring and enlightening presentation. Thank you, sir. Gratitude is the best attitude. I would like to express my gratitude to all the esteemed delegates of the International Conference on Commerce, Management and Social Science Research for their presence and contribution to take time out from their busy schedule and to grace the event. Further, all the participants have 14 more days time till 31st October 2021 for any modification, update and submission of final article paper for publication. Publication process will start after all selected articles, papers converted as per standard publication format. Participants, presenters will receive e-certificate till 23rd October 2021. Hard copy of certificate and proceeding books after 15th November 2021. Online publication tentative date is 10th November 2021. We are grateful for your presence and with given time and efforts, our well wishes for the future collaborations and participation. Please find the feedback link in the chat box. We request you all 